Um, change to a to aircraft carriers and the A. Close test. Close test. So not live right now. Greetings, captains. Back in December, we announced our plans to implement significant change to aircraft carriers. They they announced they were going to make changes. I don't know what they planned to change. I'm curious. What what did they plan to change? I mean, they link it themselves, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, they had some. Yeah, the, indeed, they had some some plans about when they want the spot to happen. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. That was war. I hope you're ready for more news because we have a boatload of info to share. As a reminder, we'll be conducting our first major close test on April 16th today to try out these updates. So certain details can and will change as we move through the testing process. Indeed, this is the first iteration of the test. First iteration, there will be changes. Things will not change, not the same as they are. Hey Grumble, good morning mate. How are you doing man? With that out of the way, let's go down to business. Changes to aircraft carriers. First some details. As announced previously, the core of the new concept boils down to significantly changing the way that aircraft carriers operate while traveling and attacking. These new changes sure seem complicated, but glad they are trying to something. I'm really glad they're doing something. I, but as you said, they're too complicated. It means balancing will once again be hard. But balancing is making small tweaks. And then actually something's overpowered, you tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, and then when it gets to be too weak, then you tweak it back slightly. Or not, at all. Uh, th this, is not a this is not a minor cheek. Tweak. Yeah. A minor tweak. This is a... Uh, this is a uh, re release stomach bomb. Reset. That's what this is. It'll take them months to, uh, to balance this, if they can balance this. Because so far it's been very good at making uh, systems that are unbalanceable. So yeah, so we got traveling and attacking uh, states. Traveling, similar to the current implementation, traveling, also known as high altitude, okay, is the state that the aircraft will spend most of the time in as they traverse the map. What will be different while traveling? Aircraft will not spot enemy ships. Significant in Saint Chase, also not minimap, just no. You're spotting, no. Okay. It's good because it is the biggest problem. We'll not be talking about a regular AA fire. Okay. Okay, that's why they use uh, altitude because altitude already is untargetable. That's when the planes fly back. But nowadays you do. Oh, you do see the fly back at the end near the carrier. You do see the fly back on the minimap. Okay. We'll not deplete their boost. And then why have a boost? Hmm? Can, uh, can be spotted by enemy ships. Okay, so we can, we can see them just as we can see them now by fly, when they're flying back. Okay. Uh, can be spotted. Uh, normally we see the, not the place fly back, we see the minimap. We see them there fly back. So now we, you will actually see them fly back. Okay. I could be wrong on that. Cannot attack enemy ships or drop ordnance in any way. Okay, so cannot, cannot, drop, cannot drop ordnance, cannot spot. So this seems like cannot interact in any way with enemy ships. Okay. Exceptions apply. Spotting and regular A. Okay, so there are some. Here it is. There. This means the aircraft carriers must rely on spotting from teammates in order to in the, to identify targets. That's good. Uh, give the spotting back to the actual stealth ships. That's good. I like that. Carrier squadrons will also have access to a new consumable called Active Reconnaissance. Well, Active, this consumable will provide an indicator if and when aircraft are within a range of enemy AA. Similar in appearance to the spot indicator. So you get a little. Uh, if you activate this thing, press the button, you see a little pop up that says, Oh, you're now in range of someone's AA. Okay. Don't know how useful that is, but, you know, it's there. I think, they, I think with this, you should know if you activate this thing, you have no spotting whatsoever. You activate this thing, you should see on minimap what ship it is that is beneath you. So you know, is the AA scary or not scary? That's what what I would say. But for now, it's an it's an it's a way for them to actually see what's down there before before, before, eh, before they go down there. They need a lot of charge on this thing. I think this is a thing you need a lot of charge on. It's like the the hydrophone, where you need to use the lot. It it does give a, a little bit of information, but therefore you need the lot because it doesn't really do anything. Because of a sky hydrophone, kind of. It only shows them if there's a beneath them. So at the moment, it's like the. Like the submarine 
Um, skill, what's the name of it again? I also get the name. Me and names is a difficult, difficult problem. Um, yes. This one. Watchful. Same thing. Only then they have to activate this. Okay. Note that this Kashupo will not provide actual spotting or minimum indicators and will not work if the enemy ship has its AA turned off. Okay, so you can hide from this. So that's all when it's just flying around. Attack runs. We've talked about traveling, but how do you actually interact with enemy ships now? Indeed. Similar to the current implementation, aircraft carriers must start an attack run while conducting an attack run aircraft will spot enemy ships become targetable by AA fire, take significantly reduced damage from AA for the first few seconds of the attack run. Sounds logical because they basically have to dive in blind and then have to identify a target and then go for it. If you get blapped from the first second, that would be a problem for them. So I understand from the carrier's point of view, I'm afraid of people just instantly bomb dumping on someone really close. Like, um, like you can at, at basically any height launch your um, bouncing bombs and they will be able to go in and murder people and then you can go away instantly or like the rocket planes who are immune during their entire run you know those things i'm afraid of that the enemies uh, sorry the planes will still deplete their boost as usual so you can use your engine boost here if you use it and they can attack enemy ships of course it's an attack run yes Compared to the current implementation, there are some additional key differences. Preparation time for attack runs have been increased to prevent them from simply starting attack run right off the ship and avoiding most of the AA. So something like the torpedo uh, arming system, something like that. You can't instantly drop it. Okay. Okay, that, that, that's something you can tweak and then mess around with to make sure they actually have to go through AA. Planes will, however, not have reduced maneuverability during the attack preparation time. Okay, so you have to have full maneuverability, which could actually make it difficult to hit because you oversteer a lot, but we'll see. Which will make it a bit easier for the character to strike when there are no allies nearby to spot the target. Well, that sounds logical. Additionally, attack runs will only consist of one attacking flight. Well, the rest of the squadron will remain at high altitude and will not receive AA fire. Any planes that are destroyed in the attack run will not be replaced. Ooh, that's good. Meaning that shooting down planes will d directly reduce the damage dealt by the attack. If the entire uh, flight is destroyed, the runs aborted. That sounds really good. Oh, uh, does this mean slingshot is really not going to be a thing now? It, uh, it seems that way. Yeah, it seems that way. But to be fair, uh, slingshotting was not ever really amazing. So for those who have a bit of a hard time understanding, because I saw some people yesterday had a hard time understanding this. Uh, <laughs> you have your flight. Oh, let's take this color. You have your flight up there. This, this is your plane. You're going in uh, that direction. And you want to... You're going to split off a small group. Your attack flights. That's your attack flight. And your non-attack flights, slightly small now, will keep going. And that one will go all the way over there. While you do your attack with... Oh, no, let's do that. So while you do your attack with these down here... Let me just put it away to get... There. So when you drop your attack with these guys, they can be shot down. So they can be uh, shot down. And then whatever remains is the, is the squandered attacks. So let's say just one survives, just a small one. And that one strikes the boat. Hello, which boat? Beautiful boat. Amazing boat. Yeah, boat. So you don't... Uh, if, if, if your anti-air actually kills the, the planes here, 
there will be less place to attack you. They will be refilled from the top. They'll just keep going as they are. And then they fly up again and do their thing. So you, your AA now actually stops damage landing on your face. You can, however, not anymore kill the entire squadron. The entire squadron will be in, in the top there, un untargetable, unhittable. So now, at the moment, as we can do it, we attack the plane itself and the plane's flying over. We now can only shoot down the planes that are attacking and not the planes that are flying over. And this is needed because the carrier can't see what he's flying into sometimes and therefore could lose the entire squadron by flying over a own layer with full anti-air and just doing that to him. So plane kills will be a lot rarer nowadays. It will be a lot harder to get plane kills here. It does keep the carrier safer from doing things, testing out things, and he'll lose planes. He'll lose planes. But he does not lose the entire squadron in one go. And these are not spotting anyway. Sounds not too bad, to be fair. This seems like a, a reasonable option. I mean, of course, balancing has to happen and timings have to happen, etc, etc. But... And also... Yeah, as, as we said before, we have this attacking flight here. And if it attacks... Let's make this attack. But attack. The attack run. This way you attack run. So I assume that what they meant there was that uh, in this part of the attack run, they uh, cannot attack. Because this is some kind of arming distance then. I think that's how they mean it. So this is this seems the way they intend it for now to be. Okay. At least you have your record of plane kills untouched. Uh, my record has already been beaten. There was some some guy who beat my record. So I have to get my record back again. <laughs> quickly, quickly, before they get implemented. I got my server record still, both of them. But the world records have been broken. The world record has been broken. Then this here. A whole different kind of worms. While not controlling aircraft, carriers will now be able to manually control the secondary battery. If they have one, some don't. In the case of carriers with mixed secondary armaments, they will control the largest caliber guns. They will become the main caliber ones. While operating aircraft, all guns will be aimed and fired automatically as usual. There's still things about this I want to know. There's still things about this I want to know. First and foremost, um, will, because they're now player used guns, will now carriers get bloom effects? Oh, it's good for your place with CVs. It is, it is. I, I like that. I, I, this is a good way to get people to invest in playing their ships and not their planes only. This is a way to get people to use their ships. Because nowadays people don't use their ships. They'll just park their um, airfield way away and don't do anything with it and be useless for the most, most of the game. That's what most people play like. So your ship is an asset you should use, in my opinion. You, you saw my... Um, my well, uh, I think you were there. Yeah, you were there with the Dakuri game last this last week. Your ship is an asset. Your AA is an asset. Your armor is an asset. Your HP. It's all useful, and people don't use it. So they're trying to make sure that people want to try this out. Um, I'm a bit concerned about bloom and range of secondary uh, guns because they the range is pretty pretty small. I would hope that if they are play controlled, that for example, at the moment we have the Graf Zeppelin, right? You're having a 9.4 km range on secondaries maximum and a 12.5 km range on its uh, consumed at best. So you will get spotted before you can shoot. I hope that when you're in control of the guns, that you get enough range to actually shoot beyond the spotting range of your ship itself. Of course, then you need to have a bloom effect, but then at least you can shoot a bit further away. That's what I hope for. That you can actually play it as a main battery ship, although it's, yeah, you know, not the main battery ship. So I'm curious about this one. This one, it, it, it's a way to entice people to play their ships, which is a good idea in itself. Not sure if this is the way, we'll see. It might be, I don't know. It, it, I, I like the idea, I like the idea of this. I do, I do like the idea. Changes to surface ships. So those are the key changes for how aircraft carriers will operate. What about server ships? We also have some substantial changes coming uh, into the way that server ships will interact with aircraft through the anti-air batteries. First up, defensive AA fire. Ah, yes. We mentioned earlier that aircraft in travel mode will be untargetable by AA. Well, here's the exception. 
While Offensive AA fire is active, your A batteries will be able to target enemy planes, even when they are flying over you at high altitude. Ooh, so you can blap enemy planes. Uh, you can actually hit, uh, hit these guys only with FAA, but you can. That makes FAA a lot more useful here. However, while active, planes at high altitude which are under fire will be able to spot you in return. That's only fair. With, with these changes, we're also renaming the Koshubal Barrage Fire. Okay. Name change is fine. Fire. So, you can... FAA is now more useful. Uh, and it's the only way to shoot planes who are at uh, maximum altitude. So, the only way to shoot these planes down is with FAA. So, FAA is now a lot more useful than Koshubal. Which I like, because FAA is being slapped on by most people. If you don't completely build for NTA, then people don't use FAA if they can avoid it. This makes it a little bit more useful. Because you can attack them when they're not here. Oh, okay. Okay, fair enough. Priority Sector. Priority Sector is receiving some major changes and will be renamed to Active Consumant. Okay, this is the biggest naming mistake in the, in the history of names. You'll see in a sec. A baby step towards me controlling all my guns in the GK, hopefully. I mean, you will not be able to control all your guns in the GK. You can only control the biggest guns. Which is fine, but you will not control them all. The rest will be still secondaries. So, I'm curious how it works. And how, how cool it will be. I hope it is cool. I hope it is cool. I really do. Because GK. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's no the GK. No, it will not happen in the Grosso Curve first. <laughs> the Graf Zeppelin might. But the Graf Grosso Curve first. No, no, no. <laughs> That will not happen, no. Because you have main guns. Why, why also have control secondaries? It's too much work. It's too complicated. We're not smart enough for this. At least I'm not. <laughs> so most people already have problems activating their main guns and controlling their dive bombers. That's what most people already have problems with. Can you imagine having to aim with guns that have the turret reverse on both the main guns and the secondary guns? Yeah, I, I don't think so. Active consumers can be activated with the press of a button, same as now, and takes effect within your anti-air range. When activated, it will instantly deal a certain percentage of the squadron's health in damage when it enters the AA fire. Additionally, active consumers will cause the enemy aircraft within range to be un to become unable to spot. Oh, you blind them as well. So basically, you fire flashbangs at them and they can't see. Okay. Making aircraft reliant on teammate spotting. The effect will also negate the damage reduction that planes receive in the first seconds of their attack run. However, it is important to note that this should uh, be used preemptively and not reactively, as the effect will only trigger on any planes if they enter your A effect, enter your A while the effect is active. If the planes are already in the AA zone and the effect is activated, it will not block their ability spot, will not negate the AA damage reduction, and will not apply the percentage damage uh, reduction to the squadron. Oh no, um, that's right. We don't apply the percentage damage to the squadron. Good time will be critical to effective use of the ability. So for this one, so we got our ship. Amazing ship of shipiness. Here we go. Our beautiful ship. Beautiful ship. There. Beautiful ship. With our uh, anti uh, barrage of doom around us. There. This is our, well, oh, it made it both blue. We made both blue. Not really the plan, but sure. It's, it's not blue. So this is roughly our anti air range. Let's make it circle because it's in this game circular. Uh, that that'll work. Also, you become green again. You're you're an allied ship. There we go. So the planes come in. The attack planes come in. The attack planes are here, and they're going in uh, that direction. So you want to activate that uh, defensive AA thing, which I assume is still still the side on the side of the ship. There, that's better. So assume we still uh, activate on the side of the ship you choose. That's what I assume, don't know. I, I don't see a reason why we change that, so... Why would they? There. It has to be centered. Bam. So you activate this here. Create... Uh, your semicircle of doom. And then this here becomes... Deadline. There we go. Defensive, uh, sorry, uh, priority sector, active 
concealment is activated, which doesn't do anything with concealment. Now, oh, well, I, as I said, I, I don't like the name. The name is stupid. <laughs> but the name doesn't matter. It's not about the name. We'll make up a new one. So you have to activate this before they enter, because at this point, at this point right here, if they cross the threshold here, then they get the percentage damage plan. If they're already inside where you activate this, then they don't get the blap. They don't get the blap. I don't apparently you don't get anything if they if you activate it too late. Um There. The fact walls on the gate damage reduction receive uh, Yeah, it's it's important to notice you you've preemptively, not reactively. This effect will only trigger on enemy planes if they are anti AA while well, the effect is active. So this whole effect of the, the blap um uh, let's see, the blab, the, the negating the spotting, um, a damage reduction, etc. will only happen when they're flying into the area. You have to cross the border when it's active, else it won't work. So it seems like it doesn't do anything if you activate it too late. Which sounds fair, because that makes people want to use it more for um, actual events. They want to see, oh, they're flying towards me and, and, and activate it. It is also a gameplay mechanic where uh, carriers, if they see the enemy ship, let's assume this enemy ship is spotted by someone else, that enemy plane tries to bait the enemies into using that uh, ability, which is a cool way to actually have counterplay and have to play against each other. I mean, it's still the press of one button, but at least you have to time it well this time. It sounds way more useful in the old priority sector. I'm not sure about that. You have to, you have to plan this well. And what you now have is priority sector does now in the entire area here, as this at, at currently. Let's pick a nice pink. Oh, that's okay. That's a bit too much. Um, give, give me red again. This this is not long enough. Elongate. Yes, beautiful, perfect. There we go. Now she now she covers. So this entire area here, nice and pink. Bah. Is now uh, is at the currently is that a, a more damage to the enemy planes thing? Uh, you will do more um, more damage with your flag clouds. You will do more damage with everything. So there's a lot more damage here at the moment than just having to cross the threshold and only there a blap. So the blap here must be insanely powerful. So this is easily balanceable because it's the percentage damage of the enemy planes, percentage of their uh, their HP. So they can. This is easily balanceable. They can just go over threshold the right timing and they just lose 40% HP, 60% HP. Whereas this now you have this, this area in which you do more damage, and you have this other side in which you do less damage. That's what it currently is. So it's it's more of an uh, ongoing effect. Where here it's just one moment and it's there or not. So we'll see what is effect more effective, but I think that this is very easily balanceable. That's a good thing. We need things that they can actually balance and make well, because it's just one moment, and they can just uh, tweak the numbers from uh, to forty percent to sixty percent or sixty-two percent, whatever they need, or depending on how strong your A should be. So this is interesting. The time is to be well. Um, Carries can bait you into using it the wrong time, so there is counterplay to this. Um, I mean, it seems good. It's the same counterplay we have right now, by the way. But at the moment, carries can still fly over and just skirt around the edge, and you just use the thing too early. That that happens, and they 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 bait you into it, which is good. Counterplay and and working against each other is something that we need. It's just that only one button press is kind of yeah. It's still it's still a kind of boring way to counterplay, but you know, it's all they can do. It's it, the, the spotting is the big feature. This this thing here, we'll see how good it is. And I'm still curious, we have to see how it works out with the whole uh, strikes. How, how how much time they need to actually uh, get past the... just subscribed. Hey, good Zik. morning at Asmageddon and chat. Hey, good morning, mate. Good morning, mate. Thank you for the sub, mate. You are awesome. Thank you very much. So, yeah, we... Um, interesting changes. Interesting changes. So what else was there? So, uh, although active concealment... Uh, what you basically do... I mean, I think they use active consume because you blind the enemy planes. But active consume sounds stupid. It just doesn't work because you're not concealing anything. You're actually damaging enemy planes. It has a blinding flash or something. Activate blinding flash. I don't know. That would make more sense than active consume to me. <laughs> okay, interesting. 
So active concealed as a name I think is stupid because it doesn't mean anything. I'd say flashbang attack or something could work. I found this death block stream yesterday hilarious. All we asked was CVs, just spot us for themselves and on the minimap. Yeah, they make it really complicated, but there are some good points in this. I mean, if they can properly balance it, I just went over it and you have to watch the vault for that. I might make it to this video anyway, because this explains things quite easily. I think so. <laughs> I hope it's understandable. <laughs> it might not be. So, um, the, priorities, the, the, the name change is stupid, but the rest of the effect, I mean, it's, it's really easy to balance. Just tweak the percentage by one up, one down, and you can make a lot of difference. So, we'll see. And you have to be uh, good with your timing. It's just that, that um, CVs can bait this very easily. So, it depends on how long your cooldown is, mostly. But you can use... Can you use this in conjunction with that? Priority sector with defensive A. As, as we use it right now, we do it for, for double the damage boost. I would say yes, right? You have to activate defensive A before they get into your circle. Then you activate priority sector just before they hit the circle. So that so this thing actually goes off. And that, that should then work, right? I assume this works together, but it doesn't say it. It doesn't say so. It doesn't say anything about attacking or flying or, or traveling squadrons. So I hope you can um, surprise attack the enemy carrier by, uh, by sailing close towards them see that they go over you and then just activate your um the uh, priority sector and then the, uh, your defensive aid just before they hit your bubble and then black off the skies that would be cool gameplay and because this thing is limited because the thing is limited it's not they can tweak around with that and you can still blap away the whole squadron i hope you can it would be fun Will be difficult to do. Will be gameplay to actually play against the carrier. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Do it. Make sure we can do this. Because it could be fun. The actual uh, plane hunting ships. Yes. <laughs> and that comes to with the planes. Yes, planes. Indeed. So, passive increase to AA. We're not done just yet. All surface ships will receive a new passive way to deal with enemy planes. Targeting you while there are planes in your anti-air zone. Passive increases is, is a meter that will charge up while your AA is shooting enemy aircraft. Okay, ch chat. Chat. It, it's, um, uh, hold on to this. Hold on to this, chat. There. Goes into chat. There. A enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's, it's now yours, chat. It's now yours. So, um, let's see. We got a... Yeah. So, we got a meter that will charge up while AA is shooting enemy aircraft. So, we got ourselves a meter... One meter exactly, nothing more, nothing less. One meter, yes, one meter. There's our meter. Hello, meter. Um, increases is a meter that will charge up while you're shooting enemy aircraft. So we have a meter that is charging. Charge, yes. Charging up. Oh, wait, this is the wrong one. Let's use a... Charging. Charging, yes. Um, your progress is not time limited. Um, so what you get is a bonus to AA damage. So we want to charge this. A bonus to the damage caused by active consumment. Stupid name. Um, a reduction in a active consumment cooldown. Stupid name. Okay. Will not reset if you disable your AA. That's good. So you can actually still hide yourself if you want to. 40 is very important. And I'll see your benefits. And this will last for several minutes. So what I now want to do with my uh, with my um, Johan is we want to charge this thing up. So get into uh, anti air fight if we can, and charge this thing up all the way to 100. percent That's what we want. And once it's there, we want to actually hunt down enemy planes uh, with or big boost. It will be actively automatically. So, when it's about 90% here, you want to go into an enemy ship near enemy uh, planes. Use your, um, if it still works together, make this work together. Use your uh, priority sector before they fly in, defensive AA, and then have this thing proc at the same time. That's what you want. And that's a whole gameplay plan you can do. And because this is not time limited, 
And how many minutes it is depends if, if you want to have this active before you activate this or if you want to activate this while uh, just at the moment you're going to make this active. So it depends on how long it will last, but this could be a fun way to actually hunt down uh, planes. Of course, hunting down planes is hard, but it will be, will be kind of fun. I will try this to combine all three of them. I will I will try this. You know I will. You know I will. <laughs> Let's see. It looks 75 centimeters. This is this is definitely a meter. Definitely a meter. Here. Here. It even, even says it right there. You see? It even says it right there. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I don't like all these changes were giving us, us on the more substances than before with these massive roundabout wave changes. I agree on that. They actually use a nuclear bomb to kill a mosquito. And then to balance a nuclear bomb is a lot more work than to balance one little change. But the changes they propose so far seem interesting. So in conclusion, they're working hard on changing how one of the worst features of the game is being implemented. And that's pretty good. I'm, I'm curious what they'll make of it. Of course, it's a close test. First of, all, first of many tests, I assume. Um, I think it will be in the game as a separate game mode at some point. But uh, we'll see when it comes in. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, hope you had fun. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!